started. Welcome everyone to the fourth regular joint quarterly meeting of the Board of Directors of the Colorado River Water Conservation District and the Colorado River Water Conservation District acting by and through its Colorado River Water Project Enterprise. Uh, Director Kaplan is receiving an award this morning in Beaver Creek. I don't remember what who from. Do you remember? Uh, no. We'll ask him what it's he It's a very there. distinguished award, however, and he yeah. be there. So. so he will be here uh, after lunch today to join us, and welcome to everyone else. Uh, as a reminder, we are meeting until 5 o'clock today and 5 o'clock tomorrow, uh, and tomorrow is our strategic planning lunch. <laughs> So any changes uh, to the agenda for today? Uh, yes, we do have one addition, Madam President. Um, we would like to suggest to the board that you amend the agenda to include an item under uh, general manager's report item number five in the agenda. So it would be 5B, an addition of um, the uh, the title will be the Lower Gunnison Project Supplemental Watershed Agreement Authorization Request. Um, and Raquel's just going to hand out a, a memo as background. Um, she's going to read that for an executive session, but Peter's going to be rid of me, so don't, don't try to uh, not pay attention. Well, you're kind um, of stuck in her. Peter didn't laugh. Uh, <laughs> I know. Um, anyway, if we could, uh, with that amendment, approve the agenda. Okay. Any other changes to the agenda? We have a motion to approve. So move. Second. Um, Moved by Johnson. Second. Uh, second by Hazard. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, our third the mm -hmm. consent agenda. And it is a very short consent agenda. Any questions? Or I'll take a motion to approve. Move the consent agenda. Okay, moved by Richard. Second, Smart. Yeah. second by Haas. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, 906, and we're at the town council's report. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> um, I would make a recommendation that it's within the agenda that the board convene into executive session pursuant to CRS section 24 402.4B and E to discuss the items listed on their agenda tab 3 A. Okay. Move by hazard. Uh, Mothers, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, um, would note that, <laughs> thank you, Director Jacober. Um, the first item up is uh, related to Shoshone permanency, and um, Director Jacober has graciously agreed to recuse herself for that discussion. Um, if we could get a uh, staff member to um, Show Director Jacober a nice place to hang out for a little bit and then maybe grab her. Um, uh, the um, matters discussed uh, to be discussed in executive session will constitute attorney client communications for which no further recording needs to be um, made. Are we all uh, are we waiting to bring anybody in? Yes, there would be an admitted. It's still working. You know who's the bit? Okay, she said she's <laughs> Um, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Uh, during the executive session portion of the um, River District's uh, board meeting today, the board discussed uh, with council and received um, legal advice and provided guidance on the items listed under the board's uh, agenda tab 3A. Um, 
Uh, note for the record that um, Director Jacober was not present during the uh, discussion of the first item under that tab, and um, uh, Associate Counsel Bruce Walters was not present for the discussion under the last item under that tab. Um, I believe there were some matters under which the um, board was considering um, a potential uh, further action in the uh, Madam Chair, if you'd like, I could make recommendations on that. Yes, please. Um, I would make a recommendation that the uh, board authorize um, the general manager on the current general counsel to enter into a contract with Ecosystem Sciences um, LLC um, in the amount not to exceed $95,000 to provide um, Shoshone's uh, support for Shoshone permanency uh, efforts with respect to habitat analysis. Motion. So, so I'll second. <laughs> okay. Moved by Chavez, second by Haas. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion's approved. Any abstentions? Um, ah. Any abstentions? Director, Director Jacober. Any abstentions on that? Oh, Anyone? Yeah. Do you want to abstain from a vote where we're retaining? Uh, I, if you want me to, I, to. I'm I in just, favor of this. Okay. All right. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> the um, uh, second item was um, um, that I would make a recommendation that the board um, uh, uh, approve a motion to authorize a general manager to enter into an amendment of a contract subject to approval of, by general counsel of the existing river district contract with River Restoration out of Carbondale. Um, an increase in the amount of uh, that contract of $50,000, uh, again, you know, to provide support <clears throat> of the um, Shoshone permanency efforts. Motion. So moved. Moved by Dennison. Second. Second by Rober. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <clears throat> Motion passes. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, the third item is the um, uh, uh, related to the Wolfer Mountain Reservoir budgeting process, and that would um, uh, uh, be a recommendation that the board authorize a um, uh, on uh, by the general manager to execute an approval of general counsel an amendment of the 2021 Wolfer Mountain Reservoir budget agreement. Um, uh, to extend that agreement uh, for an additional year um, to expire on December 31, 2025, with, between the River District and Denver Water. Right, we'll go ahead. Motion on that contract extension. It's moved by Beckley. Second. Second by Chavez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any <clears throat> All right, motion passes. Um, let's take a, about a 10 minute break and refill your coffee and uh, bio break <laughs> and be back uh, five to one.
And so uh, some of these are not surprising. And the, the, the not spoiler alert is that the existing interim uh, operations are not sufficient to stabilize the system. And this is the quote, due to insufficient use reductions. Okay, so that's sort of the primary assumption that uh, use reductions are the solution to the uh, imbalance between water supply and demand in the Colorado River system, right? And so we have a bunch of competing proposals that have been um, submitted to reclamation for their consideration and incorporation into the uh, process. And you've heard about the upper basin and lower basin ones. I'm gonna uh, focus on those two. And these are very generalized analysis of just a small subset of what's been submitted. So the upper basin proposal really is designed to protect storage. Uh, and it relies, it does that by relying on large water use reductions in the lower basin, okay? So that's sort of the, the headline there for the upper basin proposal. Lower basin proposal um, is really, in my terms, designed to protect historical uses in the lower basin after they address what they call the structural deficit, which is the known imbalance of 1.5, up to 1.5 million acre feet of uh, uses. So that would have to be conserved first, um, but it does not, and it does it at the, at the cost of reservoir storage. So it doesn't protect reservoir storage. It basically operates both reservoirs at a low level. Um, <coughs> and in fact, the reclamation uh, results show that Lake Powell falls below critical elevations <laughs> more than half of the time. So that lower basin proposal from my uh, you know, reading is, is probably not going to carry the day because uh, Reclamation has clearly stated that they need to protect at least elevation 3,500. And again, that's the, the critical elevation here that Reclamation's own analysis shows does not get protected. So, and not only that, Lake Mead falls very close to or below 1,000 uh, feet above mean sea level, which is still protects their uh, dead pool and their power, but it's not uh, presents a whole lot of risk, right? When Lake Mead is at, at that level. There are several other proposals and principles, including the Conservation Coalition uh, proposal. That one, uh, it uses aggressive water use reductions, uh, mostly in the lower basin, up to 3.2 million acre feet, which is an interesting number because that's the number that the basin study identified in 2012 when we put together the, this thing called the basin study. And so it's, again, there's no spoiler alert here. These are no, nothing is new, but they're basically saying we, we need to uh, reduce uh, those uses at that level to protect the system. The other really important thing here, uh, no determination has been made yet on which proposals to bring forward as a NEPA action alternative. These are just discussion items. Um, but it's anticipated, as Andy said, uh, to happen by December 2024. So at CRUA, everybody's holding their breath. Uh, what's what's going to be brought forward? Um, and so if you're going there, you'll see and hear and read about um, what Reclamation mm -hmm. is proposing. So I'm probably almost halfway through my time. But um, just real quick, I mean, our understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, DK, is that the, the, the indication from the Bureau is that they do not intend to have a preferred alternative. That's in addition. So not only will they not have a preferred alternative of all the action alternatives, they haven't told us which action alternatives will be in the draft EIS. So the draft EIS would come out theoretically by the end of the year. At that point, it would have some action alternatives and said, we're going to consider those and we're going to analyze those and seek public comment on those yet to be identified action alternatives. Then there would be a, some sort of uh, supplemental draft or in the final, an identified um, preferred alternative, which would basically be what they would analyze and take additional comments on as the process goes forward to basically end um, no later than August of 2026. 
And that magic date is because that's when you have to set the operating plan for 2027, okay? So a lot uh, there. Um, I'm gonna breeze through these. You've heard about the uh, proposed alternatives. Um, these are the details and we'll make these available. Um, but due to the time constraints, we're, we're just gonna highlight uh, the difference between the upper and the lower. And I, I mentioned about you know storage versus use. That's really the difference. Uh, a reminder about the lower uh, division state's proposal is that it actually requires uh, upper basin conservation and relies on that to prop up their uses, okay? And so um, both of these also would rely on the ability to create what we call an operationally neutral conservation uh, mechanism. Right now that already occurs in Lake Mead, which is called ICS. Um, and, and what the upper division is saying, we want that same ability to store our conserved consumptive use that doesn't change operations, but gives us security going forward. So that's what those are. And both proposals have some flavor of uh, those ICS or inter, um, created surplus, interim created surplus concepts. So there's some other ones, the uh, Gila River Indian community did uh, propose an action alternative, which is a lot like the lower di uh, division states. Um, you heard about the cooperative conservation. In the yellow, I want to uh, bring your attention to that. Um, you know, most NEPA alternatives, most NEPA analyses rely on a no action alternative baseline. That's not what we're doing here. That's not what reclamation is doing. They're going to assume as their baseline a continued current strategies baseline, okay, the CCS. So basically, that they're going to compare as if the 2007 interim guidelines continues and all the interim uh, agreements continue going forward. And that's minute 323, the drought contingency plan, uh, et cetera. Which I just want to say is an interesting comparison because when you read the 2007 interim guidelines, they say that if there's not an alternative put in place at the end of 2026, that they will revert back and it, it's got some funny language, but it means it will revert back to the LROC, uh, the long-term operating criteria that were developed in the early 70s that have a presumptive release out of Powell of 8.23 million acre feet. And, and um, it's an interesting decision by the Bureau to, to not use that as the, as, the, as the comparative analysis, because at least the way some of us read the existing law, that's what should under law happen. But um, it, it, it is, um, I imagine that um, if there's not a consensus solution on the river, that some court will get to decide whether or not that was a correct move or not. So, so just moving on quickly. So the way that they're analyzing these potential alternatives is uh, putting in a set of demands and putting in a set of hydrology. So um, basically use um, desires, and water supply availability. So this is what uh, the assumptions are for the demands. And there's a lot here, but your eye may see a few things. Yellow lower basin stays constant at seven and a half million acre feet. Mexico stays uh, constant at 1.5. And what really uh, bothers some people in the lower basin, the upper basin states schedule increases. Their water demands increase, not by a huge amount, but from about five and a half million to six million, which coincides with the uh, determination of the, um, the reclamation made, which is a safe yield for the upper basin. So these are just demands. These are not uses. This is what powers the, the model. And I just want you to keep that in mind. And the other thing that powers the model is this spaghetti plot, which I don't expect oh. you to understand, except <laughs> that it shows a huge range of supplies. And on the right hand side, it goes from 6 million acre feet up to 42 million acre feet of potential supplies. Um, and you can kind of see in the bottom left, that's based on five different um, ensembles or five different uh, water supply scenarios, which takes into account projected climate change, 
It does some fancy statistical uh, comparisons and conditioning, they call it. But the, the thing to keep in mind is you see kind of a floor at 6 million or a little bit less and sort of an upper ceiling, maybe closer to 22 to 25. So climate change is not saying that there will be no wet cycles. That's what this illustrates. But it is also showing a propensity to lower bait load and lower supplies in the future. DK, so, what are the years on the bottom? I can't see. So these are all projected right. start to 2026. And it's sort of uh, arbitrary, really. But it's a 50-year window, I believe, uh, or less. 30-year window, 30 I guess, right. um, that they're using uh, for their modeling, OK? So each one of these spaghetti traces would have a set of results. And that's what they're going to throw <laughs> into their grinder of statistical analysis and come up with box plots and all sorts of different uh, potential distributions of results. So can't get into that now. Just the, the main point is a whole set of supplies and these demands, which are basically static, you know. Um, and so here are the, the key takeaways uh, and the results. And I kind of already gave you some of these. But um, when you look at the uh, continued current strategies, not sufficient, right? And if you look at the upper basin, um, this, these are reclamations terms. So I want to make sure that um, we attribute that. But Powell is higher, sometimes much higher under the upper division states proposal under fl all flow conditions. So it protects storage. Um, but despite these releases, um, the, up, the upper division states maintain, also maintain uh, meat elevations higher than the current baseline and almost always protects a thousand. This is really important. I mean, it's very effective at protecting storage because it is reducing uses in the lower base, okay? And you can see the reductions, um, even in wet conditions, uh, are almost a million acre feet for the lower basin. So they're going to have to, under our proposal, uh, do more with less. Now, the lower division states, uh, you can kind of see that, again, what I said, it doesn't perform well um, for storage. Uh, even having large um, reductions in both upper and lower basin, uh, and what it says for upper basin, a median reduction of 350,000 acre feet for us, okay, in the proposed lower division states alternative. And even with that, they can't maintain storage because their uses are so high, okay? Me does stay above a, a thousand, uh, which is an interesting <laughs> preference on their part. So I'm not going to get too much uh, on these other ones, um, except that the <clears throat> conservation alternative again, uh, is very um, robust on conservation uh, with a median uh, delay or a decrease in uses of 3.2 million acre feet. And I'm just going to throw this up there and not talk about it, but this is the results of the um, all of the things that I told you, all the demands, all the supplies, uh, and all the statistics for five different uh, alternatives under wet, average, and dry. I'd love to go through this at another time with <laughs> anybody if you want to have a sub committee. Um, lunch today with DK. Yeah, lunch with me, <laughs> lunch and learn. Um, and I'm still going through these, but um, I just wanted to give you this opportunity to, to think about what's going on in the current status, which is changing as we see. DJ, would you be willing to share these slides out? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. great. Yeah. And in fact, we're waiting for the full slide deck from yeah. the bureau. We did take some screenshots of the presentation. Yes. So did I think yeah. about yeah. very well. Yeah. yeah, but we're trying to get the, the full slide deck. Yeah, they, they will be posted. The reclamation promised they'd be posted. They weren't up as early as this morning, so we'll let you know, share the link. But these are the screen, screen captures that uh, I was able to grab. All right. Thank you, DK. Really appreciate it. Um, so um, in light of all that, the, the states, I will say, uh, despite the lack of progress, do continue to meet on a regular basis. Um, they, uh, they are conversing uh, regularly, um, but I, I think at a, a serious log jam 
in terms of any kind of progress. Um, I, I identified kind of four areas that, that we understand are um, uh, holding up any kind of um, agreement between the seven states. Um, the, the one that DK uh, alluded to, or one of the ones that DK alluded to is the lower basin's uh, insistence that there be mandatory reductions in consumptive use in the upper basin. That component is a pretty hard one for the upper basin to agree to because there is no mechanism uh, by our state and any of the other upper basin states to impose shortages or curtailment except in times of compact uh, violation. So um, it, it is actually, uh, I think there's a pretty good argument that it would violate our state's constitutional provisions related to prior appropriation for our state to try to do that. And I'm not suggesting, by the way, that our state's inclined to do that. It's just, it's a re request of the lower basin that doesn't meet legal reality. And um, I could see a constitutional amendment doing really horribly at the ballot box uh, to allow the state to curtail water rights out of priority or, or, or in, in order to help the lower basin sustain their large consumptive uses. So I think that's likely to happen in our state. Um, the, uh, the use of the upper, uh, uh, the other issue, right, is, is that the um, lower basin believes that, that the uh, upper initial crisp units, that's Navajo, Flaming Gorge, and, and Aspinall, should be utilized as system storage to meet times when their demands require it. So it would just be an extension of Lake Powell and Mead, and mm -hmm. they continue to take that water and drain those reservoirs, too. Um, that's not the purpose of those reservoirs under the Colorado River Storage Project Act. Uh, in fact, uh, I can't find any basis for that within within that act that authorized those uh, the construction of those reservoirs. They were built to protect our consumptive uses during times of compact curtailment or to prevent that from occurring, not, not to further fuel uh, uh, consumption by the lower basin. Um, and then, uh, you know, Discussions, uh, the, the, the lower basin continues to make statements along the lines of uh, the fact that there should be a, a, a presumptive release of a minimum of 8.23 million acre feet from Powell, ignoring completely hydrologic reality in today's world and, and one that would just drive the system into, into a crisis. You know, the DK talks about it in kind of a good neutral term tone that says, hey, look, they the bureaus analyze the lower basin proposal and it keeps these reservoirs extremely low. What that does is it keeps the whole system in a crisis, right? And it continues to put pressure and uncertainty on everybody in the basin. It's, it's a really terrible way to run a water supply for 40 million people, right? And that's, that's the, the bottom line that we've got to keep in mind that, that having an uncertain crisis-driven system and, and, and putting Band-Aids on it year to year is not a good way to move forward. But that is what the lower basin proposal does. And it's where the negotiations are stuck, one of the places it is um, right now. The other thing that, that the upper basin is seeking, um, you know, if you look at our proposal, one of the things DK didn't hit on, and I say ours, the upper basin states proposal, yeah, it protects reservoirs, right? The, it protects Powell at a, at a much higher level. But there's a cost to that protection. And, and that is that um, we definitely fall below the 82, uh, 5 eight, eight, uh, million acre feet over 10 year running average, which would include both the lower basin entitlement under the compact and our half of the Mexican treaty. But we also, under many hydrologies, fall below 75 million over 10 in order to protect Powell at that level. And um, so one of the things the upper basin is looking for is some assurance that they would avoid compact compliance litigation and, and uh, allegations that they're violating the compact over the next period of interim guidelines. That's a, um, that, that's a very important piece of this from the upper basin's perspective. One can understand from the lower basin perspective why they, they, they struggle with that ask. So those are the, the kind of key negotiating points. Um, you know, some of us, myself included, have suggested for years that uh, a multi-party complex negotiation like this 
really needs a neutral third party to be facilitating or mediating the negotiation. The, the parties have been completely resistant to that <laughs> and and not entertain that uh, that, but yet remain at loggerheads, right? So it's it's really unfortunate. and and even just go back and look at the compact when it was negotiated in 1922 for all of its flaws, there are a number of them. They didn't bring in the Department of Interior that 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 became the river master. They brought in the Secretary of Commerce, Herbert Hoover, who ran those negotiations as a as a neutral third party, right? And he was able to clobber heads and get movement because he didn't have a, a stake in the game, but he had the power of the federal government behind him. Um, that's not happening right now. So, I mean, Interior, there's a lot of great people who work at Interior, a lot of great people who work at the Bureau, but they're a stakeholder in the river. They have an interest to protect their, their interests, right? Which are not always aligned with our state's interests or the other states. So, so it's just an interesting uh, observation and I don't know that it's going anywhere, but I, I do think, want to just mention that. Um, I want to touch on, um, our application, uh, I'm going to talk about it next in Shoshone, but but the uh, B2E, the bucket for bucket two for environmental purposes, um, really drought resiliency in the upper basin. Um, that offer that that opportunity for funding opened up in uh, July. It's now had its deadline kicked out, as as mentioned in the memo, to uh, the. Uh, November 22nd instead of yesterday. Um, so we are intending to apply for the Shoshone uh, uh, next chunk of funding. Uh, approximately $40 million will be our ask of the federal government under that. Our staff has put together a tremendous uh, package and is still assembling that. Um, we think we have a really strong application. We've been engaged in lots of discussions with all sorts of people um, in the basin at the Bureau about this application and about this process. Um, I will say uh, our competition is probably getting uh, more significant um, because of the Bureau's decision to not allow the tribes to apply for money under B2W, and that's the uh, long-term water supply uh, conservation efforts. Um, if you'll, I think you may recall that the state of Colorado and the UCRC, the upper basin states, insisted and want that money to come through the UCRC and the states to uh, and under B2W. Um, the states, however, were uh, the upper basin states, as part of their dialogues with the, the upper basin tribes, had agreed that the um, deferral of, of development of, of vested water rights by the tribes should be compensated under B2W or be eligible to be compensated for that. Um, it appeared that that is where the negotiations were headed with the Bureau. There were documents exchanged that had that language in it. Right before our seminar, they, uh, the Bureau announced its decision not to allow or enable the tribes to apply for that bucket because it, in their minds, did not add new water to the system. Many of you who were at our seminar saw the impact, a very raw impact on Vice Chair Cloud uh, from the Southern Utes because she had just recently learned that information. We've been in touch with both the Southern Utes and the Ute Mountain Utes, the two tribes in our state since then. Um, they are working with the Bureau to find alternative funding sources and, and, and have, if you recall, Vice Chair Cloud at the time said she was looking for help from folks she has asked us to hold off on anything uh, that might assist the tribes because they are and feel like they're making progress with the Bureau. One of the places they're making progress is the B2E bucket, right? So that is what it is. Um, the, uh, I think the tribes uh, uh, have met with uh, Commissioner Tootin uh, as recent as last week um, and, um, and, and some of our senators or one of our senators, we, you know, it is what it is. I will say, uh, in addition, we have a number of water users in our district boundaries, other than the district, who are applying for those funds. And we have talked to those uh, water users and um, offered letters of support as long as their applications are consistent with our mission and our policies and our strategic plan. 
And so we have issued several letters of support for other people's competition, you know, applications for the same funds that we're applying for, because there are constituents and they have values that they need and desire to protect. Just want to let you know if you're surprised by my signature on those letters, that's what's going on. Um, I, I think that we have to recognize there are multiple benefits. Right now, the way it is, it's posed is that there's uh, up to 450 million available for bucket B2E. But what we've heard is that the Bureau is actually somewhere in there with the magic number set aside some amount for the later bucket B2W. So it's not all available for B2E necessarily. So there's, we don't know exactly how much is available. Um, frankly, we think we've got a really good application in Shoshone. Um, I do want to just shout out to our staff, Amy in particular, and Brendan, um, and, and the legal team, um, and our EA team. I, I mean, I could go on down the list, yeah. but, but the amount of work that's gone into our work on this is really impressive. And, um, just want to thank everybody on staff for doing that. So Andy, uh, so we we ran into this issue in Mesa County as well. So how many of those counties have written letters of support for our application? Um, our almost every well every county on the main stem has written letters of support. Many of our counties, uh, both our counties and other counties on the West Slope, have written letters of support. So all the ones that we that know that we've written letters for, are they corresponded in kind. I believe that's true, right? Yeah. And it's not just counties, it's water users associations, it's it's uh, but they have to be government entities that are sponsoring that those applications. So yes, we have we have gotten mutual, even for instance, Southwest Water Conservation District, our sister mm -hmm. district, they've written us a letter of support, we've written them a letter of support, right? For their ask. So I uh, it is what it is. And 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 I think it their pro programs down there are are actually uh, to be uh, highly recommended and admired um, whether they can fulfill the criteria the way we will is kind of up to the bureau but um, criteria does require or not require but highly recommend matching funds you'll remember that thanks to our constituents in the state of Colorado and this board we have uh, almost 56 million dollars in matching funds for a 40 million dollar request most other applicants do not have anything close to that kind of a ratio of, of matching funds. How about the tribes? Will they write a letter of recommendation for us if they ask us to write one for them? Well, they're not in our district. And, and so historically, we other than Southwestern, we've not written letters of recommendation. I, I don't know. I haven't. We haven't been asked to write a letter for them. But if we are, I, I'll certainly ask if they'll write us a letter. Good. So, um, you know, it's, it, it, it is, it, just to put it in context, because it's, I think a lot of people struggle with, well, they, they haven't developed their water, why should they be paid? Well, they haven't developed the water because the federal government in many cases has gotten in their way and prevented them from developing. Some of their water was developed, and I want to point to the Southern